Welcome back to another Coilover Adventure. I'm your host, Pearson. And in this episode, video thing, we're going to, I guess, explore more some of our issues that we had in our last video. So if you didn't watch the last video, I'll put a little link up there, but we got some BC coilovers for the S15 and we fitted them up and just found that we had really uh, close, like the coilover was really close to my wheels. So my wheels are 18 by eight plus 35. And I reckon we've got about one and a half to two mils of clearance between the coilover and the strut. So if you haven't watched that video, it may help quite a lot in making this video make a lot more sense. Uh, so I encourage you to go check that out and then come back to this one. Yeah, I've done a fair bit of research on the internet and uh, it seems to sort of everyone has varying opinions. A lot of people like a fair bit of clearance, but I can't really find out, I guess, an actual minimum or what is required. So some people seem to run, you know, a millimeter of clearance and at a racetrack, for example, and have no issues at all. And a lot of other people aren't comfortable doing that. I'll show you the problem again, just so it makes more sense. And then my plan is just to sort of wrap the coil over in some tape and then actually drive it for a bit and see if we either hear or feel sort of any contact, I guess you could say and then also be able to look at the tape and see if the rim or tire is actually touching the coilover under cornering or, or whatever. So the idea is I'm not gonna listen to what I've read online because it seems to be quite varied and we're actually just gonna test it. So that's the rough plan. Righto, so here is the problem. So as you can see, the coilover is really close to the wheel and also the tire. So there is a gap. There currently is clearance. You can see daylight through there. I've measured it somewhere between one and a half to two mil. So for reference, this is how close it is on the factory suspension. There's a decent bit of clearance, but yeah, you can see how pretty quickly with the BCs, just cause they're a bit wider, we start running into issues. So I could be wrong, but I'm gonna try and take this bracket here off the existing shock. And I think this might actually bolt up to the BC and that'll give me a place to route that ABS line. Um, so yeah, we'll try that. Yeah, it does look like it goes there. So I've bolted that in and I'm assuming this is what it's for. It, the bracket does come into contact with this bolt here. However, I don't think that's really a problem. So now this will enable me to correctly route this ABS connector, which I think just pushes down in there. And then we can slot this uh, little bayonet fitting in here. And now I've just popped that brake line in. I don't have the uh, metal sort of spade bit that locks it in so at the moment it's in there pretty secure but I will need to maybe order another one it, the, this car just didn't have it when I took it off earlier that should be all good now I was just having a bit of a look I have moved the car around a little bit moving it in now the garage but it looks like maybe it's already touched on there you can just see those the lighter sort of dirt almost colors so anyway we're gonna wrap some tape now and test it properly so I've just finished talking up uh, these large bolts here and the torque I used I checked the manual a bit hard to see but 124 Newton meters so this is it here in the manual and you can see yeah there's large two nuts 123 to 152 and that's the scale there so one Newton meters is the first number see so yeah, 123 to 152 Newton meters so I just took those up to 124 Newton meters and it was a bit tighter than I had them, so I'm glad I checked. So these are the three top nuts on the top of the strut and as pictured, we're gonna do them up to 39 to 54 Newton meters. So I'll talk those up now. Now I'm just going to wrap this in some white tape so we'll see hopefully some black marks on it uh, from the tire. Right, so the wheel's back on now, the tape is on there as you've seen. Now it's time to go for a bit of a drive. If I was a betting man, I'd guess that it's going to touch. There's one other thing I think we can do if it does touch and not work. Uh, I was doing some reading on camber bolts. so. They're like standard on some cars, but you can get them for the S15. So potentially that'll give us some more adjustment at the base. We could put it either in the lower hole or the upper hole. I'm not too sure which one exactly, but white lines sell an adjustable camber bolt, I guess you'd say. 
which might give us some more flexibility if we did want to continue to run these wheels. So that might be an option. We'll explore that later if we need to. Well, I just got back from a, maybe about a five or eight minute drive. Just went around a couple of roundabouts up and down the street, up to about 60 or 70 Ks an hour, uh, over some bumps. Fairly smooth road though, like not super aggressive. And then obviously out the driveway and sort of down the dip. Feels a bit weird driving around on uh, one coil over. So I've only got the front ride installed. The rest is still standard. It didn't actually feel too stiff in the front ride or anything. It, it felt firm, but not uh, jarring or anything like that. So a bit of an interesting perspective. I've never even thought of like installing one or two, like just putting them in the front and seeing if you can notice a difference and then putting in the rear. Um, don't think we'll do that, but yeah, unusual circumstances led us to this point. I think I may have heard it uh, make contact sort of as we went down the dip of the driveway um, but I didn't hear anything after that so it's also a bucketing down rain again which is really nice I won't be surprised if my tape isn't there anymore just due to all the water so let's have a look and see if we learned anything oh it's touching well one and a half mils might not be enough so you can see those two spots there where it's definitely contacted I was pretty confident that, yeah, that it actually touched as I drove down the driveway, so who knows. But that is touching, and that's not very good. Well, damn. Doesn't quite fit, so unfortunately I was correct in the last video. They are just a bit too close, and now we've sort of proven that. I'm going to go back and put on the standard suspension for now, but that pretty much means we need new wheels. So kind of, you know, pros and cons, but it's exciting. Um, wheels are expensive, but I was keen to change up the look of this car anyway. I'll probably sell these ones once I'm done. So if you are interested in these wheels, you can hit me up. They will fit an S15, but not if you've got BC coilovers. Unless you're willing to run like a, a two or three mil spacer at the front, then I think they'll be fine. So I guess it's a good excuse to change wheels. So that's the current plan. On that, you guys need to tell me what wheels you think would look good on this car. So we already tried our 33 GDR wheels and I know they look good. At this stage, they've gone up a lot in price. So people are sort of asking $1,500 plus for those. And for that money, you can start to get like some nice Enki RPF ones, for example, is a wheel that I've always really liked. I've had it on a couple of my previous cars. So that's something I'm considering for this car. Obviously the really nice stuff is good too, like TE 37s, real ones. Sort of feels weird though to put on a, you know, I've sort of already, they look like TE37s, we know they're not, but sort of feels weird to go out and pay, you know, a lot of money, 3,000 plus dollars, maybe two and a half second hand for a set of wheels that look exactly or very close to the same as what I've already got. So anyway, I am thinking 17s, so 17 by nine, somewhere around there, and maybe around the plus 22 offset seems to be pretty good. I'll have to crunch the numbers and make sure it's gonna fit, but I think it will. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what wheels you'd like to see on the car. I'll have to get my butt into gear and start searching for some. So I didn't explain it in the previous video, but the reason I went BCs was just because of their price and affordability. So they're so mass produced. They're one of the most popular coilovers in the world, I believe. And at $1,400 for sort of their mid model, uh, just really suited me at the time. Obviously it would be really nice to spend a fair bit more on coilovers, sort of like 2000 plus. So a lot of people suggested MCA or Murray Cood Automotive. It's a popular, growing in popularity, I'd say for sure. I've never tested them myself, but yeah, everyone seems to really like them. So uh, MCA was definitely suggested and something I considered, but was looking sort of $2,100 plus. I also considered Shockworks and even sent them some messages sort of asking about their kit. That would have been, that was my second option. That was the I was umming and ahhing between BCs and Shockworks for a little while there. So sort of again, I think they're about $2,200. So in the end, price just won out. Uh, and while I have no doubt those other coilovers are probably superior in performance and comfort and all those things, I'm just not gonna really notice that if I never test them back to back. So if I bought, you know, $2,400 coilovers or some really nice coilovers and then you had those for a year and then you tried to go back to BCs, I can understand uh, that might be a harder step. But to go this way, start off with the cheapest stuff and then if we're in a, in a position in the future or in, a, in another car where we can upgrade or, or test out some um, higher quality stuff, then that'd obviously be awesome. So just went with these for the price. They're gonna do exactly all, they're gonna do everything I need them to do. Yeah, that's really all I've got. Um, I knew these were tight on clearance. I've heard uh, MCA is better for clearance. On. So these wheels might have fit on MCA, but it's all right. I'd basically decided that I was happy to upgrade the wheels if I needed to, so 
and here we are. But anyway, that's a bit about why I chose BCs against some of your advice that you gave in earlier videos. So anyway, uh, I'm not gonna show you the reinstall of the factory suspension, because why? It's not, it's, not, it's not cool. I don't, I really don't wanna do it. It just feels like I'm going backwards, but I'd like to use the car to go to work, because it's meant to rain on and off all week. So anyway, that's probably gonna be it for this video today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bit of an interesting one. That is one unwell sounding Corolla. I searched a lot about BCs prior to buying them and in particular this issue. I've never encountered this, you know, clearance issue on other cars, particularly Skyline seemed to, to have a bit more tolerance um, or maybe I was just picking the correct wheels, I don't know. Sort of a bit of an S15 problem, but I'm sure it plagues other cars as well. So hopefully this clears it up a bit. Just once again, the wheels are 18 by eight plus 35 and the coilovers are BC BR type RA and they just don't fit. So with a couple of mils space, I reckon you'll be good, but yeah. Hopefully this shed some light on this issue, guys. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button if you liked it and you can get subscribed so you can stay up to date and see what wheels and more mods we end up doing for this car. Have a good one, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.